Thank you so much for being here, Lori. I'm so excited about this conversation. Yeah, me too. Thank you for having me. Now, I thought I was a busy woman, but reading through your bio, you have done so many different things. You're obviously a multi-passionate personality. Can you tell us a little bit about you know, how you got here and, and what your focus is right now? Yeah, well, you know, 30 years ago, I, I, I was in corporate even before Chinese medicine, and I just thought, you know, this isn't a good fit for me. <laughs> and so I just, I did all kinds of stuff to figure out what I really wanted. I wanted to wake up and have joy for what I would do, like Monet or, you know, any, anybody that we can think of that it seems like that was true for them. And so Chinese medicine found its way to me, and that's a long story, but ha partway down the road, I realized that there was something that was missing. And I, myself, through a whole menopausal journey, really, it, it was creativity that was kind of my lifeboat across from that, that whole menopausal experience. And I realized there is a marriage between healing and creativity. And so as a business owner and as someone who has to work through stuff, you know, on, as a business person, mostly in a masculine dominant sort of structure, it, it, it became really apparent very soon how valuable engaging in creativity is for working everything out. <laughs> and so I just thought, well, I need to figure out how to put this together. And so the last handful of years of my life, that has been what I've been devoted to. And women, I work mainly with women and it has been, I don't want to use the word magical because that sounds so dramatic, but it's, there's been some magic and miracles because of what creativity can extend to us as human beings. It can give you space that we, as entrepreneurs, I think our minds are always going, aren't they? I don't yeah. know if there's any time that I'm not thinking about business ideas or worrying about the business or it kind of seeps into everything. I, I paint a little bit, not well and not often enough, but I find when I paint, when I do something creative, it's, yes, it, it completely clears everything else away. It's so such a needed break sometimes. Exactly. And I, you use that word space, space and spaciousness is one of my favorite words. And I really get it in creativity. And the thing about creativity or engaging in creativity, and it doesn't even have to be painting. It just, it can just be, you know, how we talk to our teenager, how we set a table, how we plant a garden. When people think of creativity or art, they mainly think of sculpture and paintings on the gallery walls and all that stuff. And of course that's true and writing and music, but it isn't limited to just that. I mean, this is how I see it. We are an extension of the creative life force because everything that is created in nature, it ha came from that, you know, big bang energy, however we want to put that into words. And we are extensions of that. So by nature, we are also creative. And every, if people stop and think about it, it's like everything we do has a creative element to it. Doesn't mean we're hanging something on the wall of the Smithsonian, but there's a creative element to everything we're doing. So engaging in it purposely, it's a, it's like a lifelong masterclass in ourselves. <laughs> and, and the spaciousness can be felt in a creative process and then taken into our, into our businesses and our lives and our family exchanges and everything. So is that how you, you define the creative process and, and why we should be engaging in it? Well, I don't know if define, I don't mean to mince words here, but yeah. the way I see the creative process is that it's a purposeful choice, conscious choice to engage all aspects of ourselves, not just our right and left hemisphere, but our you know, that part of us that's non-physical, that's actually 80% of who we are, really some say, some say more. And so, but we don't have ways of being in a really direct relationship with that part of ourselves and the creative process. There's many ways. I mean, there's meditation and most busy women, especially entrepreneurs are like, I don't have time to meditate. Oh, and maybe, maybe she does anyway, but she's not feeling it, you know, and a creative process is palpable. Like when we're present to whatever it is we're doing and you said it like this space, everything else falls away. And, and if we go into a creative process with an intention, then it, it, things move, energy moves. We access the intelligent fabric of the universe and it becomes our business partner. <laughs> and, and that's a big deal. So you mentioned intention. What, what does intention have to do with, with creativity and with successful business buildings? Well, any business person knows they have to set their goals and they have to be clear about what direction they're moving and who they're working with and what, you know, whether it's a service or a product, that's, that's all a choice and, and it's conscious intention. I've been certified in something called intentional creativity. 
And so when we engage in a creative process with intention and the intention could be anything like, I want to understand my customer better, or I want to figure out how to be a good business person without constant worry and concern, you know, or I want to access more courage and, and connection with my ideal business, my ideal client. There's a long list, right? So <laughs> it will present itself to us and then we can choose from there. But that intention is, is vital because if we aren't clear about where we're moving and if we aren't present to what's coming up for us, then it, you know, we're just lost in like a cesspool of, and we don't always know where to step next and we get stuck. And one of the things about doing a creative process, like on a piece of paper or in a sketchbook or even on a canvas or any, any sort of a substrate like that is I love to refer to this as a sacred altar in form where we can, so alter A-L-T-A-R, where we can alter A-L-T-E-R, whatever is, needs to be changed. Do we need higher numbers? Do we need to list build? Do we need, what, whatever, do we need more customers in our brick and mortar? Whatever the thing is, um, we need to alter something. That's like energy. I refer to that as energy or life force. I mean, in Chinese medicine, it's all about the life force, right? Like that's what's beating our heart and pumping our blood right now and getting access to it and not only having access to it, but being in a, like a conscious relationship with it and then adding intention to the mix, it's, it's pretty powerful. So can you walk us through how, how we might do that for what that process looks like to take that intention and then right. your creativity? Right. So I'm going to just get, use this piece of paper as an example. So this is how accessible this is to everybody. Cause this is actually a, um, a, a piece of, you know, it was in my recycle stack. It's a piece of printer paper, right? <laughs> Eco-friendly reusing. E exactly. We're upcycling, if you will, <laughs> but this could also be in a creative journal or a visual journal, which I really, let me just show that too. I know that, that not everyone is necessarily seeing all this, but there's this is like a creative, this is a mixed media journal that, and it says creative entrepreneur on the top. And I just, one day during menopause, I was miserable because I didn't sleep for so long. And so I just painted all the pages with paint. And then, and then I went back in and I wrote all these things we're talking about. I wrote my goals. I wrote my intentions. I wrote my, you know, the t type of people I want to work with and, and that kind of thing. And it's, it's filled with this, right? I personally find that when things are in color and when they're not so black and white and dry, this is how the two sides of the, of the brain gets in, engaged, right? I mean, you can still do a Google spreadsheet and print it out and put it on one of these pages, but I, I mean, you can use both aspects, but my, my point is, is that if you do the work in a, in a visual or a creative journal or a sketchbook in the way that I'm going to show you right now, this is how energy moves. So for example, I have this page and I just drew a circle in the middle. Anybody can do that. I can't tell you how many times I've heard people say, I don't have a creative bone in my body, but it's actually not true because this is literally like a muscle to build. Anybody can draw a stick figure. Anybody can draw a circle. I mean, you can even trace, get a, I don't know, get something that has a circle and just trace it around if you need your circle to be perfect, but this is not a perfect circle. So this is one idea, one of so many ideas I can't even count, right? You can put what's really important to you or whatever's coming up for you in the moment inside of the circle and then put an intention. Like my intention is to overcome this fear of speaking or overcome a fear of being visible. I mean, these are everything I talk about is stuff I've work and continue to work through on the regular, right? And then you might write on the outside of the circle, all kinds of things that are kind of freaking you out or making you feel worrisome or whatever the, the thing is. And then you can even, you can take a highlighter, which is available on your desk, I'm sure. <laughs> and you can <clears throat> highlight things that are really important to you. You can be begin asking. So I'm a big fan of inquiry. This kind of falls under the umbrella of intention. I'm constantly literally putting my hand in my heart and asking my heart, how can I work through this? How can I get more courage? How can I feel safe being visible or all the things that come up? How can I increase my revenue? How can I lower costs? Whatever the, the things are. And, 
And then I'll leave this page out and I'll make little marks on it, or I might connect something from the inside of the circle to the outside of the circle, or I might cross out something that was a worry that I've put on the outside of the circle and replace it with something that is sort of my higher self is giving me insight for. The thing is, is that when, when things are in image and word and even color, it bypasses our, our conscious mind and goes into our subconscious where all the goods are, <laughs> right? And then we can start drawing that out and then we get insights because of having engaged in this. It's a funny thing. People are like, how does that really work? And you won't know until you do it, right? Like it's, if you were to do your next painting and before you did anything on your canvas, or maybe you did it on the back of your canvas, you wrote down something that was really important to you that you wanted to either increase or amplify or change, transform in some way. And then you went into your creative process and then you sat with it when you felt done and you asked the piece. Because remember, this is a sacred altar by our intention, right? And you say, well, show me what you know about this that I don't know. Meaning the, what you've just engaged in based on your intention going in. And then you walk by it a few times, things drop in. And it would be the same thing for a creative journal where pages open. I'll, I'll leave it open. It takes the time it takes. Like I'll start out with a circle or whatever I move to do. I might put a collage piece on there that feels like it represents what I'm reaching for. And then I'll just let it, it's like a literal, I don't know, reciprocal dance, if you will. It's like, then the page says, oh, try this and I'll do it. I've, I've learned to listen, <laughs> you know, like I don't even question it. And my job is to keep that critical mind part of myself just out and just say, Hey, sweetie, we're that's, that's not, that's not part of what we're doing here. We're playing it. There's nothing. No, this is a private and personal thing. No, one's going to see it. There will be no judgment from anyone. And it's in order to move energy and create, you know, in our case of this conversation it's to create a business that has impact and that matters to our own hearts as a business person. And there's a lot of stuff that comes up on the journey of get making that be something that we can go put our head on the pillow at night and say, yeah, this was a really good day. That's absolutely fascinating. So by marrying the creative with the, the analytical, you're, you're activating a whole different insight, a whole different set of, of skills. I love the idea of the journal as well. What a great way to be able to flip back through and see what you've done and, and what, what's come of it and really revisit And it. what's shifted and like, oh my gosh, I never could have thought of that like in my own mind. And you just said something really important. You're tactile. Well, most women, well, let me just say it this way. Most women are starting to recognize they, that being embodied is key. There's plenty still like in the head because that's just how we were trained, especially in a Western world. But when we have a head heart balance, when, you have, we, when we have a right brain, left brain dance, when we have, you know, the alpha and the omega and the yin and the yang and the light and the love and, you know, that, that combination, then we have access to everything. And that's where solutions drop in, you know, answers to our problems, literally healing of emotions and mental spins and even physical stuff. So having a physical place, like you said, tactile. It is kind of important. And a creative journal is not a huge commitment. I mean, you can get a little box and I call it a creativity kit in the sketchbook studio and just get a couple of core basics. And then and in 10 or 15 minutes, you can engage in a creative process. The mind can't say, oh, we don't have time for that, or I'm not good enough for that. That's off the table because there's no right or wrong and everything works if it's coming from you and everybody has 10 or 15 minutes, you know? <laughs> and the other thing I love about the journal is that, especially for those, those of us that don't, you know, don't feel that we're creative or don't feel that, you know, we want a lot of people to see what we're doing. It's private. It's almost like a journal, right? It, it takes private. the pressure off because nobody, it's not going to hang on a wall. Nobody's going to see it. It's, it's exactly, it's personal to you and it's private. And then there's freedom in that. We really, really get to, you know, explore and discover and just go for it. Some of the prompts in the sketchbook studio are just you know, and maybe this is something that our listeners can take away is rather than a circle, you can just take a pen and if like there's a level of frustration that happens in business, we know 
and just scratch it out on a piece of recycled paper. And, and while you're doing it, the intention would be, I just want to move this out of me. I don't need this to be living inside of me. I want what's underneath it, which is usually a center point of calm from which we can make our next choice or take our next step, right? And the frustration doesn't really get us anywhere good. So <laughs> it doesn't. So with this same principle, so marrying some kind of creative activity with the, that more analytical and that intention setting, you're saying that that works in all different scenarios. So for women that maybe the, the journal or the drawing that we're talking about now isn't their thing, what are some other ways or they just still feel like they're not even creative enough to do that, which, and you know, I think everybody is, I think you're right, but yeah. What are some other ways that we can, we can use this in our lives? One could do it on the computer, but there's research that shows that when something moves from our head and our own heart and down our arm and out our hand onto a piece of form in, in physical, that there's actually, it's more potent and powerful. Mm. So if someone doesn't want to grab a journal for themselves, then just use the recycled paper or get one of the, you know, eight and a half by 11 legal pad things. and let that be, have one pad that's dedicated to just working your stuff out on the page. Maybe get a, a couple of highlighters, you know, an orange and a yellow and a blue, whatever, whatever you love. The thing is, is to go towards what you like. If you like specific colors, use them. If you like, you know, medium point pens, use them, use what you like, use what feels smooth and soothing. And in the beginning, it might be exploration because maybe you don't know what you like. So then it's the, the first place to start is just permission to explore and permission to play, right? Like when you talked about in, in the beginning about how everything falls away when you're painting, there's an element of play in that, that adults have lost and kids still have. And everyone says, oh, you watch a kid and they don't think about it. They just do it. They dig their hands in the sand, they draw lines and they, I mean, maybe that's something you get as a sand thing and you, you just move energy. And this is actually a therapeutic thing, right? I, I don't know. Remember what those sand, that's a Zen sand thing, right? Zen sand garden or whatever it's called. And you just move the sand around, but you're just taking like 30 seconds to drop in into your body, into your heart, take some breaths and redirect yourself, right? Like that could be a creative thing. Or maybe the next time you set the table for your family, you add a little bit more joy or color or something like that. But I really do like the, the journal thing because it's, it, you can't do it wrong. You know, you just can't, you buy, you just get a blank journal and you just, let it, you, you play. And in the sketchbook studio, I mean, some people, there's all this talk about people who don't feel like they're creative. Like, how do you face a blank page? Well, there are ways to just splat things down, let them dry. And now you have a different page to, to start writing upon. You can write on top of whatever you splat. Anybody can splat paint. We've all finger painted in, you know, kindergarten. <laughs> splat the paint, let it dry. And now you have a cool page to write upon. Notice, this is the thing I would say, notice what pulls you to it, right? Like what inspires you to go and engage with it? Is it a journal? Is it the legal pad? Is it sand? Is it just walking into your living room and rearranging the pillows? <laughs> it just be in this really cool inquiry about what it is that your heart and soul feels soothed by so that you can step back into your, your sense of strength and power and bust a move that's going to be good for your business. <laughs> and I think it's, it's a lot like writing, you know, when you get writer's block and they say, you know, writer's block is, is just prejudging yes. before you put it on the page. And I, I think it's the same thing with any form of, of creativity. When we, we feel overwhelmed by the blank page, it's because we're judging what we're going to do before we even put it down there. So. Right. And you know, that's such a good point because the reason I think this is valuable to engage and build this muscle, you know, our, our creative muscle is because it literally creates a relationship with this, with this part of ourselves. And if we're alive and breathing, we all have it. That is the best business partner and business mentor we will ever find, <laughs> right? It's like, okay, so writing on the page, if something's up in your business and, and you're like, what the heck to, am I going to do? And you sit down at a, to a page and you just write to this part of yourself and say, I am stuck. I am scared. I don't know what to do about this. This person just charged me over, whatever, whatever. The, and you just write about it. And then you ask, you know, help me know what's the best thing to do. 
that opens a door to something you would never have access to if you didn't do that. So there's no writer's block there. It's all in our face, right? <laughs> I'm going to try some of this out myself. I, it's never occurred to me that to actually use the two together. I use the, the art as a, a break or as escape from the, all the other things, but to actually use the power of that together, I think is, is absolutely fascinating. And yeah. you say that it's really, it's important for your health. It's important for your work-life balance to build that muscle. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, well, it's kind of similar. Like I think every, every woman who has her own business and especially if she has a family or if she doesn't have a family and she wants to cultivate that or whatever it is she wants to cultivate, accessing the, the center point of balance in our own being is the key. Oh, so then how do you do that? Right? Well, meditation is great. But, but the creative process, which is, by the way, if I didn't already say this, is shown by research to be as potent as meditation. So a lot of women will say, well, I just, I can't meditate. I can't ca calm my mind and it's, there's too much going on. Well, then go play creatively, right? You'll get the same benefit. And, and then this idea of intention, if work-life balance is really in your face and you're not feeling the balance, right? Then that's what you bring to your creative process. That's the very thing that is up for you. And this is what I know about energy is that it doesn't present itself to us for balance or healing or transformation unless it's ready to be transformed. So if work-life balance is up, then take it, you know, be in this constant inquiry. And I think that writing inquiry, maybe all you have is maybe someone just chooses to have an inquiry journal. I literally have dozens of inquiry journals where over the years I've written things like, how can I, what do I do about, the, the, literally, I'm just posing inquiries to the intelligence that is part of me and also connected to the, to the, the whole field, right? Like the quantum field. And I've never not received an answer back, right? So all of the things that are present for a business person can be worked out and, and even sometimes wrestled with on the page. Yeah. That, did I answer your question? I feel like I got a little bit excited. Oh, no, you did. You okay. did. Okay. And I was interesting what you said about meditation, because as you were saying that, I was thinking, you know, I, I am, I'm terrible at meditating. <laughs> I try, but the harder I try to let thoughts go, the more thoughts I seem to have. However, when I am painting, I, it's no struggle at all. Like I, I literally will have, you know, I'll have no thoughts. I mean, I have no thoughts, but I can clear my mind and, and I've never really thought about that before. It's actually a more effective way for me to clear my mind than, than actually trying with meditation, oddly enough. The thing. I mean, the whole point of meditation People think the point of meditation is to settle the mind. That's just the door getting past that. You know, once you open the door, because your mind is calm enough, then the point of meditation is connecting to life. The point of it is to have that feeling that you're one with life, right? A and then to do that enough, build a muscle, we say, so that you can get off your meditation pillow. Like, like they say in yoga, I take it off the mat and go into, you, you know, your next meeting or to a, a talk you have to have with your teenager or whatever, all those things with that same presence. Mm -hmm. And I honestly, I meditate. So I, I have for years, so I'm a, a big fan, but I have not found anything uh, that works the same way that a creative process does. It like, it like covers all the bases, if you will. And it's more fun. And decades ago, I thought, if I'm going to be on this planet and walk through all these fires and do, do all this stuff with business, you know, I need to figure out how, to, how to, for it to be more fun. So I find it to be much more fun than the, the strain and the stress of some of the other ways that we think we have to go through. And if you start this way, you're giving yourself permission to make messes and, and not be perfect. And you might find some creative pursuits that you're really good at, or you really enjoy that, that become a bigger part of your life too. That's another little added element. That happens for women. And if it doesn't happen that way, that's okay too. You still have your platform to work your stuff out. Right. And so who wants to spend 10 years working something out that you could do maybe in a couple of pages. So, <laughs> and I like the efficiency of that. <laughs> yeah. no, I love efficiency. Yeah. So you've been talking about the ebook and I want to just let everybody know that there is a ebook that Lori has been kind enough to give us a free download for. 
And we're going to put the link for that in the show notes. So that'll be there for you so that you can click through to that. And you want to tell us a little bit too about what programs you've got going on, Lori, because I know you've got a couple of things going on. Yeah. So the, the ebook is, is just this sort of conversation about what it means to say yes to a sketchbook or a creative journal or visual journal, like we've been talking about, especially as a businesswoman. So it's a sketchbook studio is it's a monthly thing where you get a theme for the month and then, and then weekly prompts. So you're always knowing what you're doing in your sketchbook, right? Cause some women, we mentioned this earlier are just like, I don't know where to start. Yeah. Okay. I'm having a freak out right now and I can spat, smash some paint on a page, but then what do I do? <laughs> we just need to get a, a little bit of a momentum before we go. Oh yeah. Okay. So this is how I can use this. This is really good. And the, the themes in the sketchbook studio are all, they apply to every aspect of our life. So we've talked about work-life balance. They apply to our work, our job, or our, who we are as a businesswoman, our relationships, impact in the world, all the things that matter to every human being. And so it, it all gets covered. And then the other thing I have is what's called a sacred health academy. And I'm usually I end up working with women. I mean, I'm 61, so I, I've had a few decades of having to manage health, <laughs> right? We, we take it a little bit more for granted when we're younger. And then of course the climate and, you know, just this raging current of disease that was always in our face with pharmaceutical ads and all the things. And it's like, like, well, how do we actually be healthy? How do we be a healthy person? And a lot of women come to this place, like I have tried everything and I don't know what else to do. And they realize that they have to kind of include that sacred part of themselves, but they have no idea how to do that. So the sacred health Academy is a, a journey on how to do that. And it covers everything, nutrition, you know, meditation and all the things. And so those are the two main things. Create to Heal Studio is, is a website where you can see all the things. You can get free books and, you know, the, the free ebook. And on the Create to Heal Studio, if you go to the sketchbook studio, there's a drop down and you can get that free too. But check it all out because there's, and, and here's the thing I would say, if the consideration of, of engaging in a creative process is a bit daunting or scary or like, oh no, that's not me. Consider just setting that aside and just checking it out. Look, look at it anyway, because it's all been set up to be very friendly to the person who has never done anything like this before for the, for the purpose of them discovering, oh, I get it. There are creative bones in my body. <laughs> in fact, my bones are made of creative life force. <laughs> I can do this. And, and I've said this a million times already, but once you get a little bit of a, a, a role with it, it's like, okay, there is definitely, there's power here. Yeah. So we'll, we'll put those links in there. So it's create to heal studio.com. And then we will have the link for the free ebook and the free ebook will get you started on your journal. And then it'll also connect you with Lori so that if you want to look at the, the membership, you can do that as well. And you'll get all that information on our site there as well. Now, one thing before we go, Lori, I just want to ask you, and I asked this of all of my guests. What is your best piece of advice for a woman just starting out on her journey as an entrepreneur? Oh, yeah, that's good. I would say to connect if you think this way. Now, maybe, you know, maybe this idea of a higher self or your soul or your heart, I think it's easier if you don't relate to it that way to just consider your heart on the regular, connecting with your heart. In addition to your head, this, this is not about either, or it's about both. And, and, you know, literally dropping from your head, I, I have to do this all the time. Like when we've talked about this spinning mind, dropping from that spinning mind into my heart so that there's a shared, like it's a high council of, it's like having a board of directors in your heart, right? And just, at, and, and making sure you don't leave that part out because if you include it, more good happens. And it's just easier to be in business. Thank you for that. Now we're going to put the links, as I said, in the show notes. If you happen to be on a platform, you can't see the show notes. We will also put it on the podcast website. So if you go to onestepempire.com, all of the links for Lori, as well as all the other episodes are there. I just wanted to say thank you, Lori. Thank you so much for being with us today. This was amazing. Thank you so much.